Hey, it's Off Planet Radio, I'm Randy Moggins, and uh, we have a pretty interesting little thing we're going to do here tonight. Um, Duncan, Duncan Affinian is with me. And so uh, we were supposed to do this, this thing a couple of weeks ago, and uh, through a series of unfortunate circumstances, so to speak, uh, we were delayed because, you know, just as we were ready to, to connect, well, Duncan's phone had this bullet in it, so they don't work well, but he's here now. Duncan, hey, welcome, man. Hey. Yeah, there was a little incident that night that postponed this whole thing for a little bit, but, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but at least it didn't get the SIM card. <laughs> no, it didn't. That's, all, that's a good day anytime your SIM card doesn't get hit. Oh, so, tell me about it. I know, you know, for people out there right now, you really got to open your eyes and see where we're at because it's insane. It's insane crazy on steroids right now. I mean, people are losing it. The alternative media is falling apart. Um, the ufology movement is being torn apart by the, by the balls right now. Yeah. Um, MUFON's... MUFON's being ripped apart, and you've got a lot of people out there right now that are just disinfo agents and people that are sowing wild things out. They're, they're building towards a scenario here. And uh, so we're going to talk about all of that. I know, Duncan, you've got some things you want to kind of ventilate, so I will uh, let you do that first, my brother. <laughs> I'll be clean, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> well, within bounds. <laughs> well, within boundaries. No, uh, I, as far as the incident it, itself goes, there's not a whole lot I can say publicly right now because it is a criminal investigation, and I've already been admonished by the DA's office. Uh, I can't go beyond any testimony I've already given. I can't go beyond that. So that means there is no supposition, there is no guessing, there's none of that, you know, that cannot be talked about. Uh, I think mostly what I want to say is uh, thanks to everybody here at Centerpoint that was Air Force when we, when we needed them. Um, believe it or not, the cops who came on the scene, even though a couple of them were shaking so bad I thought they were going to lose it. Uh, the two EMTs that were there, even though one of them did have to tell me to please shut my mouth. <laughs> that was funny. Uh, the trauma unit that I was taken to, um, and just, you know, the medical staff, uh, it, it was a bad shooting. Yeah, it could have been worse. And contrary to what the Internet is saying, it wasn't seven times. It was only four. Uh, I can say the first bullet grazed me right right through here, and that's on the photograph, the big burn mark all the way across. Uh, the other one took me low in the abdominal and came up high it was through and through from the bottom up. Uh, one went through and through from the left hip down to the inside of the left thigh, which did nick the femoral artery. That's where I lost so much blood from um, the trauma unit estimated about three pints. Uh, the other bullet went through and through right shin and glanced off the shin bone. And that's the way the hits were. The first one, this was the first shot across the temple was the first one. Mm. And then I charged him after that one and then the fight started. And then the rest of that's history. So, you know, you guys out there talk, making a lot of stuff up, stop. You truly are borderline hindering a criminal investigation. 
uh, I'm not going to sit here and say there's more to this than it seems because honestly, we don't know yet. And we may never know if some of you jackasses keep flapping your gums and your fingertips on keyboards. So shut up about it. So Bill Ryan was demanding a public statement. Well, Bill, you got one. All right. So you guys over there, just just stop. Just shut up. If you want to know something, talk to me. Quit calling the shop. Quit calling where we work. Quit calling the sheriff's office. Quit. Stop calling the district attorney's office because they're facing. They're getting really pissed at some of you people. If you want to know something, just talk to me. And one of the things that I'm irritated, borderlining on neurotically angry about, there was a whole circle of men out there while this was going on. The only thing... The well, we'll give them the benefit of the doubt on that, but go ahead. Okay, okay. Okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll do this. These men, okay, formed this big circle around us with their cell phones taking videos. The only reason I took this fight the way I did is because there were women and children inside the facility this took place right in, right outside the front door. I was trying to move the fight from the front door into the parking lot behind cars to use them as shields. So all these guys were standing out there taking cell phone videos and did nothing. And it took a little 110-pound woman to come flying out that front door to tackle this guy's head while nobody else would do anything. To me, that's shameful. And this falls in with it's the same shamefulness of the same crowd that are going around to all the interviews that you and I do, that Louise Louis and You just dropped out for a minute there, so I didn't get all of that. Your video froze. Uh oh, <laughs> you know I can't repeat things. <laughs> yeah, so let me re let me reprise it a little bit because I watched this going on in real time. The interim between we were going to record this on a help me because my time scale is really off these days. It was really three weeks ago, right? No, it was the eighteenth. 18th of May. Okay. So two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. You and I were scheduled to jump on and do this interview that night. Right. And you dropped off, and I had no idea what was going on. I got worried. I tried calling you. <laughs> Your phone had a bullet in it. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it had a 9 but millimeter bullet hole all the way through it. <laughs> by... Saturday, word had leaked out, and it had filtered out onto certain select groups of, I will call them little boy soldiers, little wannabes, into groups using names like Super Soldier and things like that. Yeah. And it just fanned out from there. Nobody had any news. Nobody actually knew the facts. Yes, some things leaked out. And so what effectively happened was that I had to step up and just go with the information that the people down at the healing center had sent me and release that as saying, this is all that is known right now. This is all we can put together. No more speculation. And the amazing right. thing about it is... <clears throat> These aren't people that are exactly Duncan O'Finney and fanboys anyway. Exactly. These are people that are basically aggregating hits on YouTube, hits on websites, and trying to collect people for the purposes of sitting around and having just what is basically a gigantic circle jerk over their alleged super soldierness. So 
the, the internet rumor mill, the small community around a certain core group of people, basically began doing a hive thing, exactly like what happened, um, you know, just about a year now, when the whole thing with Max Spears blew up. And I've been pulling this parallel because they're different, but the effect's the same. <clears throat> we don't have reliable people. We don't have responsible people in terms of reliably transmitting information and knowing when not to, which pisses me off because we're feeding this constant cycle now of rumors and innuendos and lies and exaggerated stories. And all anybody's trying to do is get noticed in a crowd. You, you would not believe the people who I haven't spoken with, with good reason in a long time who suddenly are contacting me wanting information. And I said, I'd be nice guy tonight. So I'm not going to, repeat what I've said. I'll, I'll just leave it at that. Um, but no, it, it got so ridiculous at one point. And everybody putting their guess out there, everybody saying they didn't believe it, it's a lie because nobody can get hit four times and walk out of the hospital on a day, you know, day and a half later, so on and so forth. And so, you know, must been a 22 or now it's a nine millimeter guy sorry um this does go back to what you and i've talked about and the genetic engineering with the healing aspects and yep. augmentation and yep yeah that that's what i contribute this to because even in the trauma unit after losing three pints of blood, I didn't lose blood pressure. It stayed normal. Uh, they were checking hemoglobin count like every 20 minutes. It didn't go down and it actually went up. Mm -hmm. And they said, normally we would be infusing you, but there's no need. And I wouldn't have taken it anyway, because you know what my blood type is. So I, you know, that's going to be kind of hard to find. Yeah. Unless I show up. <laughs> yeah, I'll fly your butt out here to Houston. <laughs> <laughs> but it just, people just, you know, went ballistic. And again, you know, it irritates me to no end when I think back and granted, I had this guy down. I'm smashing him with headbutts, and each time I raise my head up, I'm glancing around because you know everything's in slow motion, so you take everything in, and I'm seeing the crowd getting bigger and bigger, and nobody's doing anything. And then, like I said, this little 110 pound woman comes flying out the front door, head scissors this guy, and starts hitting him. You know, who, by the way, is named Susan. Her name is Susan. Yeah. <laughs> That and because he still had the gun, he was trying to reload. Uh, I was pumping blood from a femoral artery. Um, when they turned me over, the paramedics just looked at each other and shook their heads. And that's when I started running my mouth like I always do. And I got told by a paramedic to please shut up. So, <laughs> you know, um, yeah, and then it, all of this just kind of bleeds through, no pun intended. To all these other groups out there, I, I, I see the same parallels with all of them. Yeah. Um, keyboard warriors be the toughest guys on the planet as long as they don't have to do anything or face anything. And as far as that goes, you know, the stolen Bauer crap that these only military sites out there keep putting out, take it and shove it, guys. I don't want it. There's no Bauer in killing. There's only survival in war. That's all. That's all there is, is surviving. There's no valor. There's no honor in killing. I wouldn't have it if you offered it to me. So just shove it up your butts. But before you put any more bullshit garbage out about me, shh, call me. Or come see me. 
show a pair of balls and come talk to me first. All right. Okay. And if you don't have anything add to that, we can move on to Mr. Goodbar and Mr. Wilcock. Nope. I think we've said what we need to say about that. Let the uh, guilty parties be offended appropriately in doing so. When the case is over, then I can say everything that happened. But there, there was, yes, rest assured, much, there's much more to this than I'm allowed to speak about right now. Yep. And I'd rather see justice done right now than some greaseball out there get his hot headline for 30 clicks yep. so he can run some more Google ads. I Which agree. Is cynically, I really, no all this e is. I have no ego to grind, okay? I, I may be a loud mouth sometimes, but I don't have the, the ego. You know, I may be a little arrogant, a little overbearing, but I don't have the ego. I would much rather, I totally agree, see this guy uh, off the streets and not be putting kids in harm's way and whatnot than to sit here and brag about a fight and all that. No, no, that isn't me. I'm a loud mouth. I'm just not stupid. So I agree. We, all right, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Goodbar, I like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, 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 uh, the, the topic that seems to be sucking all the air out of our, our rooms these days is, God, this thing started in early May. I mean, it's been going on for a month now, and it just doesn't seem to want to stop, and I can't seem to stop it either right now. I, I, I fired a – look, I basically fired a pop gun – in, in a small room, and it wound up ricocheting off of walls in five dimensions to get to where it's gotten now. Right. Right, Bill Ryan? I mean, hey, it was my Facebook post, right? So. Right. As far as Mr. Goodbar goes, I honestly, I don't know the guy. I have no. never – no, let me, let me take that back. I have listened to him a little bit. Um. But as far as David Wilcox goes, oh, yeah, I know David Wilcox. I've spent some one-on-one -on -one time with him and a mutual acquaintance before. Hi, Jack. <laughs> and he meant that not in the way of the airplane hijack. It's like... Uh, uh, no. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, I know where... Wilcox stands. I know what he's all about. Uh, his bottom line is the checks every month. That's his his bottom line. As far as Corey Good goes, I did do a lot of reading. I did a little research on my own, and it it's, seems to be one of the typical stories that have been coming out from multiple people over the past several years. Like the song says, "The tails grow taller on down the line." seems to inflate every time he talks it, it becomes bigger and he's, in my view he's just another person in a long line of space brothers are you know are going to come and save us don't worry don't take any personal responsibility don't try to fix the problem yourself the blue avian what are they called blue fair Sphere, blue yeah, ducks. sphere, the sphere being sphere alliance, the ord people, the blue avians. I mean, yeah. Okay. <laughs> could we just say Operation Bluebird and get it, get it over with? Because they're running the script right out of the company's manual, going back to the fifties. Oh, I know, I know. I'm not a new, I'm not a physicist by any means, but I did read where he talked about. I think he said 1982 or something. What would nine of these blue spears the size of Uranus or Neptune or something entered the solar system and, and all this stuff and that? Uh, that would be nine huge objects. 
the gravitational forces alone would be could be catastrophic. Um, I'm not a physicist, but I do know a little bit about displacement. And yeah, no, sorry, that don't fly. And in so much of the other stuff, I've I've heard him say, I'm, I'm listening. I'm like, no, no. But Duncan, Duncan, these are these are ninth dimensional beings. Ninth dimensional. Could we get to eleven? Dude, it's 11. They're from the 11th dimension. I mean, at what point do you just go, okay, I get it. I grew up watching sci-fi, you know? Yeah. But you know the inside stories about the operations. We've yeah. spent years talking to people who are legitimate ex-black ops people that have really been through the meat grinder, some of them literally. These stories are candy coating. And now they're revealing themselves because what this really is, this is lifestyle marketing from Gaia TV who's going, we don't really want to deal with all the gruesome details of MK Ultra. We just want people to know that, hey, you're a time traveler. You went out to the Kuiper Belt. You met Colonel Gonzalez out there. And and you sat in a council and translated telepathically for the, for the Galactic Council as, a, as an emissary of the secret space program. You know, it, Star Trek was doing much better plots than this in the 60s. Oh, God, yes. Absolutely. But no, what you just touched on is absolutely correct. These are the people that they don't want to touch the nuts and bolts and the horror of what the real – the real projects entail. They don't want to touch that because it's not touchy, feel good, all white like garbage. All right. It, 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 it's torture. It's, it's terror. It's, it's blood. It's death. Oh my God. Just keep that away from me. Because it's I'm slavery. Let's yeah, say, this is be honest. It, it's slavery. It's human yeah. bondage. Exactly. And, and, I'm going to tell you, and I, I, I know I mentioned this before, kind recognizes kind. Mm-hmm. There, I've always hesitated, always, to point a finger and say, no, that person was not in a, any project. But there are the telltale signs. Uh, sleeplessness is one, <laughs> never sleeping. Um, there's always those PTSD moments and your life usually stays crappy most of the time. Yeah, it really does. Doesn't it? I mean, this wasn't, this isn't the Royal road to riches. You're not going to become prosperous doing this. Your life kind of sucks. And look, over the years I have talked to legitimate people who came out of uh, some of the projects very, very similar to, to what I came out of. And I actually did speak to one other guy who was um, a few years before me. And they all tell me the same thing. I'm not going to go through all that. I am too old. I'm too tired. I have PTSD bad enough, and I'm not going to go through the ridicule that these people will put me through. And they don't. So I think I'm about ready to start pointing fingers at people and and flat out saying, no, you were never in a project. And as far as the not so secret secret space program <laughs> i mean give me a, give me a break on that <sighs> Even homer simpson that. head slap here oh! <laughs> <laughs> even in all of that it's still project it's still project um there's still the training there's still the splitting that's all still there you know, and all these people who keep talking about it, 
They have no sign of ever being split. There's no switching back and forth through personalities like you and a few other people have experienced with me and some other people. Um, it's just not there with these guys. It's not there. And this whole super soldier nonsense, I still want to kick Carrie Cassidy's ass for starting that crap. Because she's the one who started all that. And I was asking her not to call it that. Because that is not what we were. Non-recognized military assets is what we were. Augmented. We were not, quote unquote, super soldiers like in the comic books or the G.I. Joes or any of that bull, that, that garbage. That, that's not what all this was about. And unless you're ready to go down the rabbit hole and listen to the stories of the torture, the blood, the death, the killing that went on when we were children up into teenage years, up into early adulthood, then just move on. Go get your happy, feel-good story. Have your Mr. Good bar. Have your Will kick a lick. I mean, do whatever. But you're in a fantasy world the same as they are, and they helped put you there because that's their job. That's what they're being paid to do. And I said that. Nobody else. <laughs> Well, what this has become, and, and I think you and I agree, and we've, we've talked about this before, is the fact that this was becoming a marketing proposition for people who wanted to basically data mine and script write from real things that were coming out on the internet. I mean, yeah. going back to the early days when you and I were talking, there was still, I mean, there was still relatively an ability to get a story out without having it washed over with the comic book colors of all the other sites out there that were trying to glamorize this. But it got to the point where there was so much, and this is the agency tactics. This is what intelligence officers do. They create a background noise that constantly wipes out the legitimate voices out there. And exactly. It's, it's yep. what I wrote on Facebook the other day when I said, you take the Corey Good story, you take the Bill Ryan interview from Dark Journalist, and then you take the drama that has been hoiked up over all of this leading up to Contact in the Desert, and then finding out they're doing deals in the background in Hollywood with, for comic book distribution. They want to make films. They want to do a group called Corey's Kids. Oh, they want to God. drag children into what is effectively a comic book new age cult, which goes back to my original Facebook post, which got picked up by Bill Ryan, which started this whole slimy mess in the first place. And you know what? I wish, frankly, that post had never been seen except for 150 of my friends on Facebook. Right. I'm really sorry it got this far because everybody's made hay out of it. Everybody now wants to be heard talking about it. And while I'm grateful that the critical tide is out there for these people to express their lack of solidarity with what's going on with Corey Good, David Wilcock, Michael Sala, um, the gang at Gaia TV, and Jay Widener, who's script writing this bullshit. Yeah, which surprised me when I heard that. I know. What happened what? to that? Yeah, I know. So you have an entire theatrical production system that's gone into high gear now on the winds of what is, was effectively a story that was concocted by... James Corey, a.k.a. Corey Good, and his wife to suck David Wilcock in using the raw material hybridized with so-called MKUltra. Mm. Yeah. How is that not a cult when you're telling people the Blue Avians have a message for you? 
And that yeah. message, by the way, is basically love and light bullshit. Lay down, pucker up. It doesn't matter. You're going to forgive us for screwing you one more time. Now, that is a cult. And remember, I've said this a couple of times. Yeah. I, was sent, I was sent to infiltrate a cult once. Now, I know how they operate on the inside. This is a cult. Um, and I'm going to tell people something. If you take it for what it's worth. I don't care anymore. But if you go to these people and you open up your minds and your heart for these blue thing, blue, blue birds, blue people, blue peckers, penises, I don't know what, whatever they are. <laughs> if you stand there and you open yourself, you drop your shielding to let these things in, you're done. You are done. You are opening yourself up for spirits to come in, whether it be demonic or interdimensional, and you're in, you're in a whole heap of trouble, boy. So, yeah, you know, do what you want, but no way in hell am I going to do that. We spend seven days a week pulling these things back out of people, and we hear, we hear it every week. I opened myself up during meditation. The voices were talking to me. They had messages for me. And the next thing I know, bam, I'm, they're feeding on me. So I could take it for what it's worth. The surrender of one's will, one consciousness, one's breath to anything outside of yourself is opening up for spirit spirits to come in and whether you believe in spirits or not it doesn't matter because they believe in you it doesn't matter even you it doesn't matter no just because you don't believe something is real does not make it any less true and just because you get a million people saying that this guy is the greatest thing since chocolate ice cream doesn't mean he got chocolate ice cream okay it doesn't matter you can put all the lipstick on a, on a pig you want, and it's still a freaking pig. People need to start using their own judgment. You know, we can call it use the stern, use this. I say follow your gut. If it gives you that uneasy feeling, back away. If the hair on the back of your neck stands up, run. Get away from it. It's not good. And that's one of the, some of the things we hear every week, too. Maybe where we go with this a little bit is to kind of circle, kind of around, circle around to the work you're doing and also your, your practices and beliefs about white magic and the application of magic arts. Because... This is a subject that's coming up a lot now, and I think it's worth discussing because I think people need to learn to differentiate between the counterfeit that's out there okay. and legitimate application of magical practices and arts. One of the things that uh, when we teach a class or do an energy seminar, is one of the things that we like to say is that it's hard to tell where energy work starts and magic ends. They both go together. You can't have one without the other. It's just, it's just that. It comes from the power of creation itself. There's nothing evil about it. It's the intentions behind it. There are certain avenues that differentiate between what was normally called or black magic and white magic, you know, so on and so forth, or what's low magic, high magic. Okay, that's a four-hour show in and of itself. But the long and the short of it is the intentions. Now, whether you write a spell and sling it, or whether you're an energy worker, or as they bring it in to what more people would understand, a Reiki practitioner. Okay, if you have ill intentions on that person that you're working on and you really know what you're doing, you can do that person great harm. 
if you use it for the right reason, you can do that person some great good. It's the same energy pattern is what your intentions are. And that's the main difference between what, what's commonly called good magic, dark magic, so on and so forth. Um, high magic is more ritualistic. Takes time to set it up. Astrology is involved, more symbolism, so on and so forth. Low magic is stuff, something that you can do on the fly. Give me 30 seconds. I've got a spell together and I, I, and I can throw it. That's, you, that's what we call gutter magic. I mean, we come, we come from the gutter, so, you know, we do gutter magic. <laughs> Fast and dirty. Down and dirty. Yeah, a lot of people have watched the TV series Supernatural and kind of, I, that show is actually in some ways kind of accurate, I think. Have you, I don't know if you've seen it or not. Uh, actually, yeah. Uh, there are, <laughs> I drive Susan crazy <laughs> trying to watch that. I'm like, no, 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 no. You can't, do, yeah. you know, blah, blah, yeah. blah, that kind of thing. However, the thesis of it, the nuts and bolts of it, is pretty accurate. It really, it, it, you know, it, it really is with the, sim the symbolisms, um, casting spells, do, doing sigil work, um, so on and so forth. That's pretty accurate. Uh, the things about the supernatural creatures, from what I've seen that they have, is probably the most accurate part of the show. Yeah, that's kind of what I thought, too, in watching it. My, yeah. you know, my beloved wife is a huge fan of that show. And so How is my cousin? She is doing fine, brother. Good. And we are going to get there. We are, we, I promise, we are going to get back. Yeah, I know you are. I know, I know. And hopefully soon. One of the things that people ask me, is there anything else we wanna, you want to expand on with the magic thing? Because I'm trying to reel through questions that people ask me about you since most people think they can't talk to Duncan and Finney and they oh, please. somehow think that I have this magic door that I open and Duncan and Finney and appears. So um, I'm kind of riffing through questions that people have asked me. You know, I have an email people just, just write. It may be a week or two before I get back, but I usually do. Uh, look at magic. Ma look at magic in the grand scheme of, scheme of things as being the ability to pull in the energy from creation itself and use it to to inflict change. Wherever the change of the situation is for the good or for the bad. Um, in a lot of ways, and I, I hesitate. To say it in this way because of the whole umbrella imagery but just imagine this big umbrella and on top put magic underneath the umbrella is the various disciplines the various schools of thought the various philosophies underneath magic it's like you can have 50 universities teaching one class, you'll have 50 different philosophies on the subject. Uh, every, every culture has had all throughout history its own philosophy on how to use the powers of creation. Every culture has its own symbols that is used, and by using those symbols, you it's you that give power to it. The older the the philosophy and the practice is the older the symbols are, which means that they've been used more. They've been used longer. Each time someone uses the symbol, that symbol gains in power because we are giving power to that symbol. Uh, then it gets broken down. There's Norse magic, Native American medicine, okay? The Native Americans don't use the word magic. They use medicine. But it's the exact same thing. Uh, I will say this: I'm really sick and tired of hearing all these people talk about their shamans. Are you from Australia? If you're not, you're not a shaman. Get over yourself. Um, 
Yeah, well, you know, green magic, hedge witches. Uh, these are just various disciplines from the same college. And you don't have to take all the electives to graduate, okay? And, you know, and I, I'm leaving Wicca out of this because that's a Crowley invention. Um, green witch, hedge witch, wizards, warlock, so on and so forth. Of course, the warlock is the bad guy. Warlock means an oath breaker, someone who has bro broken the laws of magic, which, which means you will do no harm, only use it for good. Kind of like taking a Hippocratic oath. You know, you're only going to practice for good. A warlock is just someone who's broken that oath and is using it to do harm. It can be called a, a dark witch. Um, and none of this is indicative to Satanism. Satanism merely uses these practices. They're not any better or more ad adept at the practices than anyone else. It's just they have the numbers. And the numbers increase the power in what they do. Plus, uh, they normally usually use usually the killing of an innocent and that's usually a child that's where they get their power and those are the groups that we've been going up against now for a couple of years and that can be really nasty so in the subdivisions of all this where you cross over between magic and what effectively becomes in the Roman Catholic jargon, um, exorcism, deliverance, and that kind of, where do we get to the place where we're expelling demons, where we're casting things out and from magic? Can you arc that over? You can, absolutely. As far as the Catholic Church itself goes, the entire Sunday Mass is a spell. Um, yes, of course. Yeah, it, it is. The, the entire mass is, is a spell. The casting out of demons is not vindictive to the Catholic Church. It just so happens they've had the most experience right, with right. it. They have their modal, they have their philosophy, their wording, their prayer, so on and so forth. Different cultures have their own. As with a lot of Native American cultures, it's with drumming, singing, chanting, and dance, so on and so forth. It's the same thing, just different modalities. It doesn't matter if you're a Catholic, a Native American, uh, and it's a shaman from some place, or an Eskimo in the North Pole. It doesn't matter. What it comes down to is force of will. Is your will stronger than the entity that is inside that person? And you draw upon whatever culture and modality that you know. That's what you draw from. If you're a Catholic, you draw from the Christian prayer, the Christian rites of exorcism, so on and so forth. If you're Native American, you draw for that. If you're Norse, you draw for that. But one of the things also is there are different entities, different demonics in different cultures where one modality will not work for everything. It won't. You have to learn to change with it. you got to constantly be able to slip and slide. It's like being in a, in a fight. It's really like being in a 10-round fight. You've got to go in that first round, fill this thing out, back off, figure out what to use, what to say, what languages to use, what sigils to use, so on and so forth. But at the end of the end of, of that ordeal, it still comes down to a challenge and a battle of will. You want, you've got to want it out of there more than it wants to stay. And it will do everything it can to mind F you. <laughs> it will do everything it can. And that's basically what it all comes down to. What's the legal right of these things to be able to do this? And I know there's a legal aspect to it because there are spiritual laws in place here. Yeah. And again, I, I'm also aware that it goes back to what we were talking about earlier with the cults. 
with the Blue Avians, with anything that is a belief-based system. There's actually a legal structure in place. So what do you encounter in terms of um, breaking off legal authority of these entities to obsess, possess, or otherwise manipulate a, a human soul? That usually starts out with a very lengthy question and answer series, almost like an interrogation. <laughs> <laughs> We're sorry. Uh, no, it, it does. Uh, and then it comes to uh, a full body scan. We have to ascertain exactly what it is we're dealing. Now, things have changed over the past couple of years from the way it used to be. You're absolutely correct in what you say that there is universal law regarding possession of humans, whether it be some interdimensionals or demonics. I'll be straight up. Demonics now are easier to deal with than some of, the, some of these interdimensionals. But for, let's start from before birth up in the first four to five years. If a parent gives the child over before birth, then it will be used and controlled by the demonic or the dark priest, the dark magician, or whatnot, up until it reaches the age of, of consent. We can break that bonding. We can't. It is not easy, and it is usually very painful for all of us. Now, as an adult, if you are not of proper mind, and that's always debatable in most cases, and you unknowingly or unwillingly say yes to a possession, it's a fight, but that can be broken. If you willingly and knowingly say yes to a possession and you know it's demonic, you know it's dark, you know it's evil, so on and so forth, and you let it in, then we would invoke the rights to challenge which means we step in for that person, and if we win, it leaves. If it wins, well, I won't be around much longer. So if anybody's thinking of doing this work, that's what you've got to accept. So you effectively become an advocate or an intermediary for that person who has surrendered, given up, their own volition to a possessive entity. Correct. The thing that makes it a little easier is that very, very rarely will anyone in, a, in their right mind give up their soul. There is usually some mitigating circumstance. They're either drunk, they're on drugs, yeah. they've been beaten down, they're so sleep deprived, they don't know what they're saying, they, they're into heavy duty meditation and they made the deal in the astral, so on, and that's the other thing, with all this astral stuff out there you make a deal there it's binding here it carries back with you the astral realm ain't Disneyland guys it's a nasty place but if you make the agreement, it's binding. And then comes, you know, comes the fight. And it's not like you can just walk in and say, I gave my soul my soul, I want it back. Nah, it's not going to happen right then and there. It may take us several days to set it up. So there are hierarchies in all of this. Um, yep. and, and again, you're talking now about the extra dimensionals as well, which I don't think are very well defined. We sort of understood um, the delineation of, of what I was given, because I was trained in Christian deliverance, which is not Roman Catholic. It was the Protestant-based version, which is basically based on the New Testament. Mm -hmm. So you had powers, principalities, and seats of wickedness 
uh-huh. as degrees of that. Not well defined, but at least a sense of an understanding that there was a hierarchical structure in all of this. So what do you see with the interdimensionals? Are we left to just kind of grapple with uh, really undefined adversaries in, in the, inter- the extra-dimensional aspects? Let me try and, 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 and explain it this way. Think of an interdimensional energetic parasite that is attached to someone's spinal column, which is usually where it tries to attach. Mm-hmm. As compare it to a physical worm parasite in the intestine. That intestinal parasite is intelligent. It does have an intelligence. It will begin to control your eating habits, your sleeping habits, so on and so forth. These things kind of do the same thing, only on that energetic level. And one of the big things that we hear from people once we get them off is almost instantly my mind is clear. They can, their mind clears up. They begin to think. And that's when they start saying, oh, my God, now I know I was doing this. I didn't want to, so on and so forth. These things feed off, off the host. And they will have the host do, consume, or energetically go lower down the totem pole, I guess is a way to say it, to feed. They'll get the energy they want. Yeah, and we kind of see this expressed in humanity right now. We're just... The mass collective is sliding at a scale that I don't think it's accelerating so quickly now. The number of people that are just, they're insane, they're mad, they're obsessed, they're base. I mean, I'm not talking the normal scale of what you would consider normal human behavior. I'm talking about things that are just off scale in terms of violence. And I know depravity. And it's now to the point where people just randomly shoot each other, where they just freak out, and this whole demonic thing comes in. And it's getting more and more common. And you're beginning to notice it showing up in the media. You notice it on the street. You notice the heightened aggressions that are in the culture. And so this is operating on a collective level as well as an individual level as well, I assume. No, it is. It is. These things, okay, this is something we haven't talked about before uh, because we haven't had time, and we didn't discover it until about three weeks ago. And then there was that little incident, so we couldn't talk about it that night. What we have found out with some of these energetic, interdimensional mind efforts is what we call them, they multiply. When you begin to pull them out of someone and pull them off, they will break off just like a physical parasite and then try to bury on down into the host. Basically we, subdivide. Exactly. We found our first one about three weeks ago, and that's what happened. First case, our first experience with it. And we've had, and we're not just dealing, you know, with like a bum coming off the street saying, I sold my soul, or, you know, some came out of thin air and jumped on me. No, we're talking dealing with police officers, uh, therapists, psychologists, you know, um, highly educated, highly well-respected individuals, nurses, so on and so forth. And 
the consensus is these things are they're new. You know, give me a day when I can when I can kick the crap out of a demonic. I mean, I'll take that any day over this because there are rules there. You know, but with these things, there's no rules. It's just a fight. Hmm. Yeah, so I'm sorry, we got a little bit of lag in our signal, so I'm kind of calibrating right. as we go here. Um, the general sense is, we've, we have talked about this before, because we've said for years that we were heading towards kind of a, a critical mass in terms of humanity and how we were going to navigate this blackness that's been coming on the earth and you've talked about it repeatedly there's been signature events that have occurred over the last few years um you've talked about a sign in the sun yep. i'm wondering if given what we just talked about on a collective and individual basis you have a sense right now of where we're at and what we can expect or what we should be looking for and preparing for. Sorry, I always ask compound questions, so <laughs> kind of run with it. Sorry. <laughs> I, I see more of the same, only increasing exponentially. Uh, these interdimensional critters, as we call them, we're getting experience with them, but we need more to really ascertain a simpler way to deal with them. Um, I do have my theories of where they came from. They don't come from out in obviously our dimension or even our galaxy. When a certain thing opened up a do some doorways, it let some things through. Um, I, I see it just getting worse, just more of the same, only more. You know, just continuing to escalate um there seems there isn't a day goes by when there's you don't read in the news of dozens of shootings bombings people snapping and, and killing people and this is beyond the so-called isis and ac Qaeda, you know flag events out there this goes beyond that this is common John Doe and Jane Doe people that are, for lack of any better terms, just snapping. You're just snapping. And there are creatures that feed on death energy. Absolutely. And then once they fit, they just jump off to someone else, set up the scenario, and keep hopping and keep hopping and keep hopping. It's... Like I said, give me the days when you got a demonic's butt to kick, fine. Well, we still have that, but now we have all these other things going on as well. And until the human race decides to sit down and literally in unison as a whole ask itself, what the hell are we doing? Just what are we doing? And start shaking, shaking these things off. I, I do. You, I will use the term "shake off the bondage" because that is exactly what these things do. They entrap the person. They don't think clearly, and in some cases, they say they barely remember the past year or two years that they had this thing. So, and I wish I could tell people to go you know to see if you got one and get it off but as far as i know we're the only two doing this right now and we are trying to set things up to have classes and and train people on how to find them and how to get them off we do have uh, an apprentice or two that's working with us right now luckily one is a medical person she's a nurse and she, we need more of that. People need to pull their heads out of their butts 
and look at things for as they really are. Yeah, I will yeah. say I've been really fortunate. I had have a person who is a clairvoyant Reiki practitioner who worked with me about two years ago to pull some entities out. Mm -hmm. uh, and I got to tell you that when you have this done, it's, <laughs> you don't know how heavy this thing gets. And it's not the exactly. overt demonic stuff. It's the stuff that sits in your energy field and feeds yeah. off of you. And as it depletes you, it starts to change you. You know, and it was almost like getting like a, a, a series of vitamin B12 shots or something in terms of regained energy, re regained sense of clarity. So yeah. I, I know there's not many people out there, and you're unique. I mean, I've, I've seen you work numerous times. Um, I'm just hoping there's more people that will step out and that more people will want to learn how to do this. Because something else we've talked about before, you know, whatever happens on this, on this world in the next five years, there's going to be a cleanup crew for the apocalypse, and we're going to need people to do that. <laughs> exactly. Exactly right. Because as the violence increases with wars and terrorist attacks and so on and so forth, these things multiply. They literally have the whole restaurant to themselves. They begin tying in the people, and they do talk to each other. They are a hive mind. So there is a controlling factor out there that we haven't found it yet. But we will. Riddle may contact with me and kick my ass again. I mean, you know, whatever. <laughs> I think they may have found out how just how tough a bitch you are um, this this last round. Yeah. Um, one of the other things that I've been thinking about a lot lately, and this kind of, kind of comes from one of those times when I'm thinking and I'm going, gosh, I wish Duncan was here, but I keep f flipping back to this 1945 ritual Babylon working, which Alistair Crowley and Jack Parsons did out at Palomar. Uh, I yep. think Ron Hubbard was in the background as well for that. The more I have looked at this and the more I have thought about it, I'm fairly certain that that was the opening of a portal. And I, I'm also fairly certain that there was <coughs> the seeds of what would eventually become the Hadron Collider as well working in this on a smaller scale. In other words, I think they access something there that they then, let's say NASA Jet Propulsions Laboratory, CERN, DARPA, and the military industrial complex understood something happened there and they were replicating it. Is any of that their assessment of where we are now and why we saw this just onslaught over the last 70 years? Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we do know that some doorway portals, you know, whatever you want to call them, from the mid to late 1930s through the 40s and, and thereafter were ripped open. Uh, not just open, but they were torn. They, they were ripped, literally ripping the fab fabric of space into another, another dimension. Uh, and, the problem is keeping it open and sustaining it. That's always the problem. Um, everything there had, was being done to build up to the Hadron Collider, i.e. CERN, and that includes the Philadelphia experiment. And, yeah, you're right. They wanted these things in. They wanted to try to duplicate them, and as the military and the dumbasses – they always try to do, they think they can control these things. They think they can use them to control them, to put them in or on people, i.e. soldiers, personnel. It doesn't work that way. It never has, and it never will. 
So these things just continue to multiply and they get nastier. I'm going to move this slightly now because it's kind of building to something. And again, for me, this is speculation. Um, all this talk about the secret space program, and I can't just throw the baby out with the bathwater here. There are very credible researchers, Joseph Farrell, Richard Dolan, the testimony that's been given by Catherine Austin Fitz, um, leaked government documents, the hacking of um, military computers by an English hacker named Gary McKinnon, right. have sewn into the collective this, quote, secret space program, and I hate this term, but one of the things that's not lost on me is that it looks like these programs went back to possibly even before World War II and maybe even back into the 19th century. And that what we're dealing with now in terms of these alleged programs is an advanced military infrastructure on some scale that if it's exposed would reveal advanced technologies, what's referred to as a breakaway civilization, but I don't think it's a breakaway civilization. I think it's simply the hierarchy which is harnessing the energy of the grounders. So is, is it your opinion that we, we have some juggernaut that's sitting out there that's not been revealed to us that is being called a secret space program but is actually something else? And I just want to open up your views on this, Duncan, because there's so much speculation. There's a lot of research, and yet at the same time, I haven't been convinced of what I've seen that we can make the case for a space program, but rather a military program. I No, I go with the military program. Uh, I think almost everybody can agree that the technology that is out there that they have is well beyond what we have, okay? Uh, and that's always been done by design. The people in power and control do not want a level playing field. We see that in something as simple as our home computers. By the time we get the newest, hottest hard drive there is, it's obsolete for, those, for, for these guys, you know, for the military, so on and so forth. I don't think it's so much as a secret space program. And besides, if we know about it, you think it's not secret anymore. Um, it's it's the mil it's military exactly. industrial. It was like they got together in a room. Just imagine they're, they're all around this great big board table, and they're going, okay, guys, we have all this technology now. We're going to build these platforms, and we're going we're, we're, we're gonna, to we're gonna hit the galaxies and – We've got all of these kids lined up. What are we? Let's call it the secret space program. Yeah, that's the ticket. <laughs> I mean, how retarded is that? This is actually something I posted a few days ago because I'm like, really? This is the best you could do. When we understand that the projects, sub projects, and, and sub sub projects, I mean, it's all subdivided, they don't have names like this, they're highly compartmentalized. And none of them know what the others other are doing except at the top levels of it. Exactly. I, you know, one of the, I, I think one of the best things I can do to put my two cents in with this, and I know we, you and I have talked about it, but I straight up don't remember if I ever talked about it on a show or not, uh, was when I got to see the flying saucers that was in the jungle, half of it in the jungle floor. I uh, was sent into a, a South American jungle with a team to either retrieve or destroy a downed craft. So we're, we're back here behind the barricade. I've got the binoculars out. And I'm looking at it. Yeah, mm, silver, round, dome on top, something on the bottom. Yeah, that's, that's a flying saucer. Oh, wait a minute. What does that say? 
USAF X dash <laughs> one. Okay. <laughs> oh, shit. That's one of ours. Um, I started to take a team from behind the barricade to go get it, to go get the, the, the pilot, uh, the pilot. I think it said it had the crew of three. Yeah, it went boom before we got there. And it was a small nuclear explosion. But long and short of it, it was one of ours. So does the government, the military, the military industrial complex, and so on and so forth, have highly advanced secret technology? Of course they do. They always have. You know, by the time it leaks down to us, they it's obsolete for 10, 20 years. They don't need it anymore. But do I believe the whole so-called secret space program garbage that's out there with Corey Goodbar and all? No, I don't. No. And I have my own reasons for saying that. Some of it is because I spent a good number of years looking at some of their advanced technology when I was in in these projects and sorry mr good bar you're, you're you're full of it so i'll just say it point blank and as far as david wilcott goes yeah he knows what i think about him so no need to go there so the military is basically this is is there a galactic or cosmic aspect to this that that you you, you understand duncan I would say so, yeah. But with saying that, I do not believe that there are these space probers out there, so on and so forth, that are here to save us. No. You know, because I hear it so, I get a headache doing Google searches by just throwing those keywords in there. There must be a hundred different alien races from a hundred different human ambassadors for these races, and they're all here to save us. What are you waiting on? <laughs> What's keeping you? I mean, you know, I know there's construction on the Galactic Freeway, but there's a couple of bypasses I could show you. You know, you can get past the toll booth and come underneath, but, you know, it's just, it, it's just, it's a dog and pony show. You yeah, know, it's, it's, sorry guys, we had to do excessive riff riding in order to be able to get here. Yeah. There was turbulence and, and, and basically the wormhole contracted and it was, it was just a nightmare. <laughs> I swear the engineers are on the way. <laughs> they will be there tomorrow. You know, we're, we're kind of <laughs> tossing some levity in here just because you, you have to sit back and look at this and, 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 we take a pretty expansive view of what's going on. I mean, I, I don't reject the idea of entities. I call them that um, beings from other places, including other places inside, inside under, under, and it, around our own world. But I'm thinking more and more. Well, I, we, Emily and I have talked about this a lot, and we've talked about it in group conversations that we've had. Our sense is that the ocean is the deep and it may actually be in some sense the gateway into space. As trippy as that sounds. Yeah, it's not very trippy. Uh, I've actually <laughs> heard that before. Long, long time ago. Give me a day or two to pull that memory out. Okay, yeah. okay. The sense that we're getting is that there's a water component. Largely, and, and here's your external clue, the largest space agency operation is the U.S. Navy. It's not the Air Force. I know. <laughs> which is I the know. opposite of what you would think, but you go and look at the number of commanders in NASA that came from Navy versus Air Force pilots. Here's one. And there is a jurisdiction to this. Yeah. Oh, and the, I. The Navy has legal jurisdiction over maritime operations. Yes, they do. 
and to take that one step beyond. It's always been known since the days of the OSS that you cannot tell where the CIA begins and ONI ends. They are one and the same. They operate jointly in, per, in perfect unison. Because when I was in these projects, I was more ONI than I was CIA. Yeah. <coughs> Thank you, Admiral Cisco. You pile of crap. <laughs> Who ran the operations in Grenada? Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I don't want to. I'm not going to. I'm not going to ask you to step out on the limb there. People, <laughs> Google is your friend. You know, but go look a little deeper than the surface level information on that. Yeah, I was in Grenada. I, I, I will say that I was part of all that. So it was another guy that we'll talk about some night, and yeah, that'd be fun. Whenever you're ready to do that, that's. Um, I want a better internet connection and i've got it all this is the yeah we don't have a great connection on this show folks so this probably you'll get this in audio and we'll try to clean it up a little bit we're struggling with bandwidth because of duncan's location um one of the questions that i get sometimes is and i'll try to frame this in the most acceptable way how does somebody who was trained by the cia cia as a quote programmed killer wind up being a healer choice and that's a hard question I, I know that but it is. it is it is but the answer simply in one word is choice personal choice it's what i chose you you know you get up every day and you make your personal choices and what you're going to do that day you get up every day, you make a choice. Am I, what am I going to be today? Am I going to be a victim or am I going to be a, be a warrior? Am I going to be a fighter? Am I going to be some, somebody who trots forward and does what is needed done? Or am I going to play victim? And am I going to get up today? Am I going to be an asshole? Am I going to hurt someone or am I going to help someone? I would prefer to help someone than to hurt someone. And I'd like that you ask this because I want to make this statement because I've already been seeing this stuff. Quote, with all the training you've had, why didn't you kill this guy? Healers don't kill. We don't kill. There was a time when I was younger, when I was still split. Yeah, most likely he'd be dead. I walked away from all that. And healers don't kill. There was no need. I hope that puts an end to some of the questions about that. I actually thought that was a really nice segue because it really goes into the heart of a lot of questions that people have about this in terms of your own personal choices, our own personal choices about what we do. I mean, I, I, I always understood that I came into this life not ever to kill because of previous lives I was, it's a sensitivity with me. It's just something I understood. I also understand that there's a necessity in this world for people to be soldiers, for people to do rather unpleasant tasks, but that we eventually evolve past the necessity for this and the mechanization of the human mind and the human body as an unwilling machine has to stop which brings me to, again, the crux of this whole alternative mass media clusterfuck that we're going through. Because 
I feel like the message is being lost. The narrative is being lost in woo-woo and conjecture and egos and people who want to sell books and people who want to book great big convention centers full of people to go in and buy shit and fill seats and sit on their fat asses and munch popcorn while they listen to more woo-woo. Yeah. When yeah. in fact the whole point of all that we've done, oh God, I'm going to unload here. When I first interviewed you, Lo, many years ago, we had a point in that first interview where I think both of us realized we had to, we had to get off the call for a while because it got heavy and it got intense. Yeah. And I'll never forget that because it was when I realized how human you were and how empathically I was plugging into what was coming through you energetically. It was a human connection on a level that I, I've had a few that was very intense. And people need to understand that the whole point of why Duncan O'Finian came public and why he's continued to do this, and this is me just saying this, is this in PR, I'm not, I'm nobody's handler, I'm nobody's spokesman. You know, <clears throat> we sit down and we do these conversations and it's raw, it's unrehearsed. But I do know that what you've done, Duncan, over the years was never done for money. It was never done for fame. It was done to open up a conversation about what is unacceptable, which is mind control and human subjugation. All of that is being washed under by all of this crap on the internet, which enshrines people now as being deities by dint of the fact that they've supposedly been taken into government programs and done exotic things and have magic powers. Yeah, no, you're right. You're absolutely, you're absolutely right. Um, you know, you have all these people talk about disclosure, disclosure, disclosure. Disclosure from a government that has done nothing but torture and kill and lie and cover up. Do you think they're going to tell you the truth anyway? You know, and what does it matter? I think most people do realize the truth, you know, and have for a very, very long time. We're not alone. It's a big hunk of space out there. <laughs> Everything else pales because that's, you're right, that seems to be where everyone wants to go. They make me feel good so I don't have to deal with choices. I don't have to deal with personal responsibility, so on and so forth. So I don't have to look at what's really going on over here because these projects have never stopped. They move them around. They change their names. They, they do all this, but they've never stopped. And the, this, they're all tied into the satanic ritual of abuse that's been going on, the cults, government, politicians, F CIA, NSA, ONI, they're all in it together. And when we as a people, when we as humanity turn our backs on the smallest of our species, the children, to where we just don't care, all we care about is getting some instant gratification from listening to someone on a stage spout off about something that they made up. Where does that leave us as a group? Where does that leave the humanity in all of us as a whole? Because there are some really, really fantastic people out there that I love dearly. But there are also some people out there that I would like nothing better than to shine my size 10 boot up, shove it sideways up their ass. Yep. Because if you, if you aren't part of the solution, you're part of the problem. And one of the reasons there is so much anger 
with these subjects, with the the whole MK, with the tortures, the killings, and, and, and whatnot, it is my belief that once you recognize it's there universally, you become responsible for fixing it, for making it right. You are forced to become part of the solution. So by denying it, denying it, denying it, and becoming angry and lashing out at the people who are trying to fix it, you're trying to run away from your responsibility. And every adult, every person over the age of reason, at some time in their life, they are faced with their total humanity. They are faced with a, at a crossroads. Turn left or turn right. Everyone goes through that. And once that choice is made, there's no turning back. <laughs> one, one road's an easy road. So I, I, I call it the bullshit road. You know, jump in the boat and just float on down. The other road is the right road, and it's full of boulders, landmines, ogres with, with clubs, and you have to fight your way through it all the time. But it's the right thing to do, not the easy thing to do. That's all I know to say. And it won't get you money, and it won't get you a showbiz career. It won't no. get you laid. And it'll probably really piss you off. But, you know, I wanted to go there with you because, quite frankly, I'm sitting here processing this whole thing. And I'm like, is this the sum total of what I've done for the last seven or eight years? Is watch as it devolved down to the point where we're living Disneyland fantasies? And I don't even want to talk about it. You know, every show I've done re recently, it's been like, this is the last time I'm talking about it. And then it, it blows up all over again, and it gets bigger and uglier and stinkier yeah. as it goes on. How many times have I said I'm done? <laughs> and I keep getting yanked back in, you know? What are we? Are we like obsessive compulsives or – I don't know. I mean, what, what drives me at this point is I want to get to the conversation about how we do something positive. Which yeah, is really what we are talking about when we're talking about the healing arts, the application of magic in right ways, the, the power that we have as human beings, which go, kind, kind of goes back to the early part of the conversation. You've made decisions that have put you in that place where you have attachments. You've made decisions where you've decided you cannot walk the left-handed path anymore. You've made decisions that you will comprehend that we deal with a dualistic universe where there's good and evil and we're forced to choose and we're forced to deal with the consequences of our choosing. But we don't live in fantasy land. We don't buy tickets and get a candy cotton ball to sit there and intake what is effectively an, anest an anesthetic to your soul. And, I, and this, this is what's... This is what's been pissing me off. It's, it's why I keep driving. And I'm having a lot of conversations in the background with some people that are kind of expressing the same thing. That on a larger scale, what we're dealing with, this is just me because I can talk to my friend here like this. I'm seeing more and more where we're dealing with the own darkness in our own subconscious right now. And that's what a lot of this is. We've wanted to say... We've wanted to stay in fantasy land rather than deal with the harsh reality. The harsh reality is being dropped right back on us. We have to deal with it now. We can't do the anesthesia anymore. You're sounding exactly like Susan right now. She can handle that much better than I can because she understands it better than I can. But you're absolutely correct. It's, it's, what, it's akin to the dark night of the soul. Okay, and it is also if we don't face the darkness, we're, we're look, we're dualistic. We have a dark side, we have a light side. 
and staying in balance is what sustains us, okay? If we're totally on the one side, then we're just total pacifist. You constantly get the crap beat out of you. you. You don't do anything. That dark side is what gives you drive, passion. It gives you motivation. When used in balance, it makes us what we are. That dark side also has a shadow within a shadow. And it's a shadow within the shadow that we have to face. It is the darkest of the dark. We all have it. We all have it. And we either face it or it grows. And it grows and it grows until it takes us over. And that is what some of these things eat on. That's, that's what they jump on there and feed off of. And it just makes it go boom, 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 boom. And it's turning people into total subhumans. It's making these people subhumans. I mean, who would walk in, who would walk into an elementary school or a kindergarten and just start shooting up kids for no reason? That's not a human being. That's a, sub, that's a subhuman. That's below human humanity. But you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. So much of what we're dealing with right now is the darkness of our own collective souls. And it's coming back to haunt and it's coming back to bite. And we, as a whole of humanity, better clean our act up really, really quick. And start yeah, taking we need to be healthy again. And we need to stop consuming shit. <clears throat> you know, I've repeatedly told people, because I, I get people all the time that are asking me, well, the, people send me YouTube videos all the time. And as flattered as I am by the sharing of information, and I'm not trying to discourage the legitimate side of that, I don't have time to watch this stuff. And it's not my favorite medium anyway. I'd much rather sit down and read it. I'd certainly prefer to sit down and hear it. Yeah. But most of all, what I would prefer is that we be more discriminant, that we shut down some of this electronic crap around us, that we unplug and get back into yeah. nature and, and shut the external voices off. And I think a good third of our problems would start to be taken care of because we'd begin to heal from the inside. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have to heal from the inside out, not the outside in. Uh, that's one of the things when we do our uh, energy shielding work workshops and whatnot, is we talk about healing from the inside out, uh, how to shield yourself from the negative influences, at least temporarily, so you can cut it off and get a break, clear your thinking, help you to see, are, are you going left, are you going right, are you going backwards, is that an external influence, is it your own subconscious influence, so on and so forth. There are magical techniques to help with that, to cut off the outside influences and stimulus. Uh, that's some of the things that we teach along with the breathing exercises, the movement, pulling the energy in, boosting your energy shield, which most people call the aura. And it's not just pretty colors. It's our own electromagnetic shield that each and every one of us produces naturally. We all, if every living creature produces an electromagnetic shield around itself. And it's basically designed to keep things like these mind efforts that we're talking about off to keep these things away and that's one of the things you know even biblically where it talks about to be bathed in the blood of the land be white or stuff it's here it's the shield you know even the bible is fulfilled with this stuff i mean hell the bible is one of the biggest grim you know grimoires that i've ever read when you look when you Tear it apart. It is actually, yeah. Yeah. It's a weird um anywhere else you want to go in this conversation, anything you want to address, bring up, or speak to? 
No, I think we're good right now. Uh, I just, you know, I wanted to make the little proclamations. I love the the road that we went down with this. I think the timing of it was perfect. Um, next time we do this, I prom- I'll try not to get shot or anything. So we <laughs> you know, on time. Uh, no guarantees. Uh, but I will say this, you know, okay, this is four times. I've been shot 10 times total. So and that doesn't include the buckshot. So my, my tally is going up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm starting to look like a chunk of Swiss cheese, but you know. Yeah. We'll call this the post-traumatic episode <laughs> with Duncan and like Because like was, listen, it was, it was good to have a conversation with you again and, I'm glad we got to some go to some places that we went on this because I don't oh know that there's people out there that want to hear this stuff from you. And uh, okay. so we'll get some feedback from you, the listeners as well. Duncan, how would people reach you assuming that they so were inclined? Uh, the easiest way is email. Finbar triple X at gmail.com. That is the easiest way you start calling. I, I, I make no promises that any cell phone I have will ever be working. <laughs> Not ever. We'll put um, the picture up for anybody that hasn't seen the bullet, the cell phone. It's <laughs> well, I can, I guess I can say at this point it's priceless. No, I serious, man. I was in the ambulance. <laughs> Susan was in the ambulance with me, and I'm reaching in my pocket because I was going to have her call you from the ambulance on the way. And I pull it out, and it's in pieces. And I start guessing the guy who shot me. <laughs> yeah, and half of it's embedded underneath your, your skin. Yeah, a good portion of it is still in there. Yeah. But they said it won't do any harm, so. So it's bloody inconvenient to have a bullet through your cell phone. And... Yeah. We're grateful that the cell phone took the shock. We're grateful that all those other bullets that did connect, well, let's just say that um, the technology works pretty good still, doesn't it? The technology is still working fantastic. I mean, to go through that and walk out in a day and a half with nothing but Tylenol, yeah, I'll, t- I'll take it. Yeah, so uh, anybody that's it. a skeptic out there on the effects of MK Ultra and what's really been done to people who were altered this way. Um, well, we've got the story and we've got photographic evidence and yeah. we'll provide some of that when we put this show up as well. Yeah. I gave you the pictures of the day after of the wounds and then uh, just a few days later of, of the healing process. So. Yeah. So we'll put some of those up. We'll bake those into the video so you can take a look at those and, uh, those of you who are on audio, they'll be on the website at offplanetradio.com. Duncan O'Finian joined us for what has been, I think, a kind of, well, it always is with us, great fun, and yet at the same time, kick-ass experience and sobriety. So um, we're going to wrap it we up. Always, Go ahead. We, always have, we always have fun. We always have fun. We do. And we'll do it together in one place at one time very soon, too, my brother. And uh, that's going to wrap it up for now. This is Off Planet Radio. I'm Randy Moggins. The truth is out there. It's inside you. And you really do need to go inside and find it. We'll be back with another show very soon. Uh